Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bridgeport Stories. Uh, as is the case always, we bring somebody different from the Bridgeport community to talk to. And uh, your guest today is Nick of Frankie's Diner. I'm sure you've all eaten there or at least uh, attempted to late at night when you're trying to get a table. But Frankie, I mean, Nick, you always try to get them in, right? We try to get everybody in, and everybody calls me Frankie. So I know that's a that's not a mistake. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I've done that to you a couple times, yeah. but uh, obviously, I'm in, I, I am endeared to that name. I like it, yeah. uh, and you kept the name. So, what what's behind that? I mean, was that your father's business long ago? Was his name Frankie? Did he buy it from somebody named Frankie? How did that whole thing start? So the place opened up. In, By the way, it's on Barnum Avenue, if it, anybody doesn't know. 1660 but. Barnum Ave, right by Bridgeport Hospital. Um, it was opened by two brothers, one who was Frankie and the other who was Ashy, and their family is still around. Um, they sold the place to Harold Berkowitz, who owns, who after opening up Frankie's, or taking over Frankie's, opened up the Duchess chain. Oh, yeah, of course. So he bought that when he came back from World War II in 1946. Was he Marazzi's too? Or? Uh, no, he bought Marazzi's and then he changed the name to Duchess, and that's 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 how that goes. Okay. Um, but um, we been together. My father came here in 1972. Started working there in maybe 1973. Your father was working there in 73. In 73, and by okay. 1980, he became a partner with Harold oh. Berkowitz and Victor Hasiotis, and uh, basically, I came in the picture when I was like eight or nine years old. My father started bringing me in and. I would just bust tables and so at the risk get slapped of, around. At the risk of generalizing, and I know it's never good to generalize, yeah. but what is it with Greeks and diners? T tell me about that. Is that a cultural thing? It's, is it what, what is it? So I think I think when Greeks came here in the '60s and the '70s, um, they all jumped ship somewhere. So you had the Greeks that either jumped ship and were bridge painters that came from certain parts of Greece. Or you had peop, uh, Greeks who jumped ship and started working in the restaurants as dishwashers, and then went went long enough to buy the places from the, the owners. They would be the the next person in line. So, is there an entrepreneurial spirit in the culture that they're not only working places; they like to own them and run them? And uh, entrepreneurial spirit, yes, because uh, they came from villages in Greece where they had it wasn't that easy. So they came here for a better life, and they worked very hard. Long hours. I mean, they would start five, six o'clock in the morning, and not end till eleven o'clock at night sometimes, and um, built a, a life for themselves. Um, so when you come from a, another country and you don't have certain things, you come here and you work very hard, and that's what a lot of these Greeks did. And your dad and your family uh, came to Bridgeport. Uh, my father originally came to New York, uh, where his sister was, but he jumped ship, and the immigration was looking for him, and. My aunt, my aunt's husband's uncle was in Bridgeport, who owned Lidl's, uh, that was on Kenyon Street. Of course, Stratford. Uh, in Stratford. So he, my father ended up coming to Bridgeport and started working at American Chain. Yep. And after American Chain, he went to Frankie's because uh, Paul from Lidl's knew him very well and knew everybody there. But you were living in? Bridgeport. Where? My father was living at the time, I believe it was on... Uh, What's the next street over from Park Ave? Uh, from North Ave after Park Ave. It's um, Laurel Street? Yes. Lorraine Street. Uh, you have Park Avenue. Yeah. You have Norman. No, you have no. It's, it's, it, 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 nor if, if you're on North Ave, the next street over is Lorraine Street. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, going so, in the same direction. So I yes. believe my mother and my father lived there. That was their first house. Oh, that's almost the North End. North End. And then they bought the house on uh, Maplewood and Wood Avenue, oh, okay. where, where I grew up. I was born in Park City Hospital, so... Um, Maplewood and Wood. Right. Okay. Right. Um, is the house still there? The house is still there, and I take my kids by it to see it all the time. And really? I'm, not only do I tell them that's where Daddy was born when we go by Park City Hospital, which is no longer there, but I also bring them to see the old house, and I told them that I'm going to buy the house again one day. So, Nick, when you're a kid, are you thinking, one day I'm going to work with Daddy and I'm going to own that, that business? Uh, no, I would. I owned the business when I was nine years old. You did. So you were already. No, in. no. Oh. I thought I owned the business <laughs> oh, when I was nine oh, okay. years old. <laughs> I, I would go in there and I would boss everybody around. And uh -huh. I, but I got I got slapped around a lot. And the test was to go down to the basement and clean as many potatoes as I could. And you know, a short period of time or onions where I was crying all the time from peeling onions. But they tested you. They didn't just give it to you. They made no, sure you no. worked yeah, for you it. Yeah, you had to work for it. Yeah, there was and there was no money. Um, I, didn't, I didn't make any money. Um, I, was, I would bust tables. 
uh, work in the, in the dishwashing area. So at nine years old, they did, did a lot of stuff. But What grammar school? Maplewood. So you're going to school in Maplewood. Yep. You're bussing tables. Yep. Uh, I'd love to see pictures of you bussing tables at, at eight years old or nine years old. Do they exist? Do you have pictures? No. I, you know what? I, I oh, read, that's too bad. It, the crazy thing is that I'm, I'm looking for pictures of the old diner that, that existed before this one, and uh, I can't find anything in archives. Um, there's very few pictures that are around, and it's it, it's unbelievable. What year were you born, Nick? 77. Oh, so you're, you're a youngster. Wow. Yeah. So you're born in 77, so we're talking about 86. Yeah. The year of the Mets. That's when you were um, starting to get involved in, in going to the restaurant and yep. doing things with your dad. Yep. Uh, and then you guys moved out of town, right? 1988, we moved out of town, went to Newtown, and uh, things changed. Going from Maplewood Ave, where you have you know sirens going off and you have the, the, the police station well, was on the, way, the west side. that was tough. The 80s in Bridgeport Very was, tough. was tough. That was a crack epidemic and all yeah. the murders and the yeah. and the uh, drive-bys. I mean, it was a tough time. To live it was a tough time. Uh, when, when we were still living here, Charles Wolf, who was at the at the hardware store on, by the Wood Park, uh, got murdered. Somebody went in and robbed him and killed him. He was the first murder from all the merchants that we knew. Then um, in 91... As a Tiptoe was down there? Yeah, Tiptoe was there and all the other stuff. And then, uh, Fortune what, Cookie across what the, the street. What was the name of that... Uh, rest, that it wasn't there a dance hall across the street? Yeah, it was the, it was, uh, the Gizmos. Gizmos, that's Gizmos, right. Gizmos, right. Uh, my mom and my grandmother worked around the corner in Benimav. Yeah. And they worked in a sweatshop. They used to make the pocketbooks. Okay. And um, all the Greek ladies and all the Portuguese ladies in the neighborhood, that's where they worked. Was it a Greek neighborhood? Um, our neighborhood was predominantly Italian, Portuguese, and Greek. Okay. Uh, so it's Mediterranean neighborhood. Very Mediterranean. Every, every uh, driveway had wooden crates from the grapes in, in the fall wow. for making wine. And not only did we make wine in that, in that house, we used to make moonshine. My father used to make moonshine also. And it must have been great stonework everywhere, right? No, we, no, we had a, no it was fenced with, uh, with bushes. And then my father and my grandfather used to plant gardens all around the house. And he, my, my grandfather, for some reason, used to love to plant these big uh, these zucchini plants that would grow all on top of the house. Wow. And uh, it was kind of funny. It was kind of cool. To see the zucchinis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they would hang down. And then, and then we had this cherry tree in the backyard that was over 100 years old. And as kids, we would climb it and pick the cherries off of it. And it was just a great neighborhood. Those are great stories. Yeah. Now, uh, light blue is a big deal, right? What's is that a color Gre Greeks use light blue a it is, lot, right? It is, it is. Is that the flag, one of the colors it's of the flag? It's the color of the flag, yes. Yeah. White and blue. And, uh, and so you, in high school... Were you still thinking about the restaurant business? Um, in high school, I went to Notre Dame, graduated in 95. Uh, I was and I wasn't. Um, in 95, when I graduated, I said to my father, I'm not going to college. He goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to work with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do very well. He goes, you're crazy. He goes, why don't you do something? So that whole summer, I worked like 100 hours a week for the whole summer. And then I said, the hell with this. I'm going to go and roll a Housatonic. So I did. I went and enrolled. Hus and Hus you were with Father Bill San Giovanni over at Notre Dame. Yeah, right. Uh, I enrolled at Housatonic. I ended up graduating in 98. I got my associate's degree in accounting. Um, our commencement speaker was Cindy Lopper. And I didn't get to go to my commencement because my father took me and went to, we went to Greece for three weeks. Oh, so you missed all So the I missed that, but I turned 21 in Greece, which meant nothing because the drinking there's no drinking age. Right, you could start at so any age. The partying started as soon as I got to Greece. But the, it wasn't. It wasn't because of my birthday turning twenty one. It was because you were there. I went and saw all my cousins. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of weird to turn twenty. You go back often. Uh, I've been back about seven times. Yeah, that's great. It must be great. My yeah. wife wants to go someday. You're gonna have to tell me how to do it. How, yeah, how we've we've seen in, uh, the, in the past uh, three trips. I've taken my my kids have been there three times now. We've seen about seventy five percent of Greece. Um, we've been to a lot of islands, a lot of the mainland, and we've seen. In 2016, the trip we took was all ancient, all ancient uh, places that we went to. Uh, in 2018, the trip we took was all about uh, the, the stuff that happened in the, uh, for the, the independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1821. So we saw a lot of that stuff. And um, we went to some museums that showed what the Greeks went through with the Turks and the Ottoman Empire and how they tortured the Greeks and, and kind of the stuff that they did. And Greece went through a lot recently, right, with the austerity measures and everything? They did, like they did, and they, they've bounced back, and um, they're doing very well with their tourism industry, as they always have. Um, 
they're strong people. They've they've kept alive even through everything they went through the Ottoman Empire. They kept their language, their religion, and everything was done underground. And uh, that, that's that's a very big thing that they didn't lose their identity. So, yeah, we we we're, we're here. Yeah, and so um, you decided after college that you would be a part of the restaurant business. No, after after Ustanik, I enrolled myself into Shaker Heart because um, I, I saved a lot of money going to Ustanik and. I went right into Shaker Heart, and um, I um, continued. I think I had 18 credits to go, and my father got sick. And at the age of uh, 21, I took over the, the restaurant. Oh, really? Not only did I take over the restaurant at 21, but I also took over my father's bills, everything that came along with it because my father got sick. Oh, so he couldn't even work. Yeah, he couldn't work. So at 21, I grew up really quickly. Oh. Um, and I think my father prepared me for that. Um, I was very responsible at a very young age, so it wasn't. It was. It was hard. I'd never had weekends off. You have a lot of brothers and sisters. I just have one sister. One sister. Yeah, she was never so involved. So it was really yours to do. Yeah. 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 She was never involved with the business, so th- this was something that um, basically I was with my father from the age of nine um, till whenever. I never. I never hung out with my mother. Wow. So. Um, uh, your, your mom's still alive? My mom is. She's 65 years old. Okay. Uh, she's my uh, live-in babysitter. She takes care of my children. We built an in-law apartment for her and my father. My father passed away eight years ago. Now, now you decided to, and I'm sorry to hear that, um, but you decided to stay, to follow your father's legacy or complete your father's legacy. You stayed in Bridgeport. You continue to do what, well, tell us about your reasoning for that. Well, over the years, we've met such great people. Uh, that neighborhood has gone through many changes, but with, the, with all the changes, we've met even more people. And uh, we're in a great business. It's a, it's, it's a difficult industry, but again, it's, it's very rewarding because at the end of the day, I've uh, met more people. I have a bigger network than a lot of other people do, and these are all everyday people, and they come from all walks of life, and I'm very lucky for that. Um, we have Bridgeport Hospital that's up the street. We've met a lot of people from there. We have great companies and businesses all up and down Barnum Ave, so it's not a dead place. Uh, it still has a lot of commerce. Um, and I, I, I followed my father's footsteps in that because uh, it was a good living, um, a hard living. It's not, it's not an easy business to be in. So people think, oh, well, he's an entrepreneur. He's got his own business. He's making a lot of money. It's easy for him. It's not easy. It's not. It? It's absolutely not. Um, finding good help is one of the hardest things. And I have... I have How many hours a week do you work? Well, you if, I, if I calculate everything between what I do at home... If you and, did. And, and even, even all the stuff that I do with the NRG and all the things that I'm a part of, right. I, it's easily 100 hours a week. Yeah. Um, so it's not easy. It's not easy. There's nothing easy about the restaurant business. Absolutely not. I take away a lot of time from my children that I'm not there with them because I'm working. Yeah. Um, but so again, how do you make up for that? How do you make up for that? What do you do with your children to make up for that? I, w- when I'm home, I try to spend as much time as I can with them. How old are they? What's their names? My daughter is 11. Her name is Eleni. My son is uh, he's going to be 8 years old. His name is Peter. Okay. They're both named after their grandparents. That's a, that's a Greek tradition. We name our children after our parents. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, they go to Greek school. We have very high expectations of them, so they can't slack. Um, they, they're both fluent in Greek at this age. Um, they actually know how to read Greek and write it, and I don't, because I never went to Greek school. So that was, that was something that I, sometimes right now in my, in my old age, I blame my mother for not sending me to Greek school. And she says, oh, you were lazy. You didn't want to go. But it wasn't. The truth now, are you was, part of the church at Greek or, or, or Orthodox on Park Avenue? I am. So that's, uh, that's one of, that's, I'm part of two churches. I'm part of the church. We got married in New York because my wife went to a, a Greek church in New York. So the fact that I don't go to church on Sunday because I'm at work, my wife decided that she would stay with her parish. And it's the same thing. It's uh, yeah. just that it's a different community. Um, but we are, we're still part of the community at, at Holy Trinity. Um, our kids go to Greek school there. We, 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 you know, we're part of all the activities, and you know, it's a great place to be. That's fantastic. Yeah. So culturally, you try to keep it going on. We do, absolutely, yeah. and we've passed it on to our children. Uh, we make sure that they know all our history and what all the dates in the calendar mean, and we celebrate a lot of different holidays, you know, whether it's a name day or just a religious holiday. We, we, they, they know all about it. Since uh, 98, when you took over the restaurant, um, 
what's how do you characterize the business um it's changed dramatically um the changes that have come and i well, i never saw this coming but because i'm adaptive and I, I like to do new things um just like amazon has taken over the retail world and shopping uber eats and doordash and all the uh, delivery companies have taken over the restaurant business so I've adapted with that, and I've and this is what was one of the things that helped me during this uh, Corona crisis. Um, I had a built-in uh, takeout business that was fantastic. Um, my delivery business was great. My catering business has been decent, and I was able to keep that going throughout this whole Corona crisis. And uh, you know it, it, that that aspect of the business has changed a lot with the, with the delivery. The only problem with those companies is that they're your partner. They take 30%. Um, Who takes 30%? Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub. Really? They do. They're Why don't the, you do it yourself? Why don't you? The logistics of it doing yourself are very difficult. Oh. Uh, to have five or six guys hanging around your place just to do deliveries, now you're paying $11 each plus insurances and costs. So when you take that 30% into effect, that's it's not really 30%. It's not because you're taking advertising into effect there. You're taking uh, credit card fees. You're taking so it's the not insurance. Worth, it's not worth the additional 10% that you might make. It's not. Absolutely not. So that's why I've done it and I've kept it. I started Uber Eats, uh, I want to say, three and a half years ago. Um, I think that's changed the restaurant business a lot. Only because in our types of uh, dining, and I mean by diners, um, yeah, it's, people still go out, but a lot of people are still ordering in and staying home and watching Netflix. Um, if they want to drink and they don't want to be on the road, they can sit home and order food from anywhere that they want, right from the palm of their hand. They don't have to go anywhere. So that has changed the, the whole game dramatically. Now, you were affected personally by COVID early on. I was. Um, I had it, it back in, I think it was March 27th or 28th. Um, I was out of work for 18 days. Uh, it felt like a sinus infection. I went and I took the test the second day after I spoke to my doctor, and it was terrible. That was the worst part of COVID for us. Uh, then my wife got infected. My children got it. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so it was. It, my my son had no symptoms. My daughter had some symptoms, but nothing like, like you know, we just had headaches. We had very bad headaches. It felt like a sinus infection. So we were very lucky compared to others. Um, yes, you were, and uh, we're grateful for that. Um, and I'm sure you're a man of faith, too. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I'm sure you're appreciative um, of your health. So um, what is next? Uh, because we're seeing what's happening because of COVID and how businesses are changing, what's the new paradigm? I, I, you know what? It's very hard to tell because, um, yeah, we're saying June 20th we're going to open up per the state. I think people are still going to be a little worried and not come out. And we still don't know how this is going to affect us in the fall. And so many changes are happening, and they're happening so quickly. And I don't even think anybody really knows yet. Um, and the fact that they're saying that we might not have school in the fall um, kind of affects everything, too. Um, so I'm not sure. But I know one thing for sure is that I'll be adapting my business the way we have to, the way things going. That's how I'm going to adapt. In the business world, you just continue to adapt. You have to. If you don't, you you're dead. To, you're dead. It's yep. like a shark. You stop, swim, you stop swimming, you die. Absolutely. And uh, I find that's true in the business world. If you stop changing, you die. Yes. Um, and you have not stopped and you continue. Yep. What is it um, that you want to tell people about yourself that people don't know? What is it about Nick? Is it a special hobby or is there a special interest or, or um, something that you do? Anything. Tell us something that people don't typically know about you because they don't ask. Um, I love my family. I love to hang out with them even though I don't have that much time to. I believe that. Um, we like to go hiking. Okay. Um, so, like, where would you hike? In Connecticut or out of state? No, no. In we have such beautiful places here. There's no reason to go out of state. Whether you go to the, the trail on Tate's Mill on what is it, Tate's Mill Road in Trumbull? Trumbull, okay. You know, you have the trail there. Or we have a trail in Newtown that's hidden and not too many people know about it. Yep. And it's fantastic. There's little streams that run through it. There's there's big giant rocks. There's it's it's no kidding. great trails. Um, Any swimming holes? No, I if, if even if there were, I wouldn't because I'm not a great swimmer. <laughs> so I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's that's one thing we do with the kids and uh, we enjoy that. Now we've had this big issue with black beer all over the place in Newtown. 
Uh, we had one at the end of our street the other day. So we are adventurous, but we're also, that's, that's in the back of our mind, that what do we do if we're in the, in the forest and we're hiking and all of a sudden we encounter one of these beautiful beasts, you know? Do you have a, um, a soft place in your heart for Bridgeport? Is that one of the reasons why you're still here? Um, and or is it because you see things coming down the road? Or what is it about Bridgeport? I absolutely have a soft place for Bridgeport in my heart. My neighborhood, especially in the east side and the east end, um, that was one of the many reasons why I joined the NRZ. That was great eye-opener to be part of all the stuff that I've been part of. Uh, we have a lot of things that I think are going to make Bridgeport even better in the future. It's going to take some time, I think. But with uh, the right direction and the, the right people in place, and I think we're in a, a decent place right now. And if we continue moving in this line, I think we'll be okay. Um, my neighborhood has, has had its rough spots. Um, but, again, we have a lot of good people, very, very protective of the neighborhood. Um and I think it's going to get better. We have some new businesses that have rolled into the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to commend one of my neighbors, Doug Wade at Wade's what Dairy. What a great guy, huh? Doug Wade is absolutely amazing. i got to get him on this show. I, I'm, I'm actually uh, surprised that he didn't come here before me. Yeah, right. And, and, and thank guy. you that you called me. You know, He's a good guy. He's a great guy. And, and we, we have other great businesses up and down the avenue, too. Uh, um, Airway Motors, Delibro Realty, Bobby Delibro. Long time. Long right? time. Uh, great, great businessman, great people, great family man, uh, great place to buy cars and even to go. So you're involved in the NRZs too, and uh, how, how does that help? Um, it helps because uh, I've been able to voice my. That's neighborhood group. It's, right? it's a neighborhood group. I'm able, to, able to, to sit there with the neighborhood people and voice our concerns and our problems in the neighborhood, and we try to fix the things that are wrong. And some things we've been very successful and others we've, we're still trying. And I think if you don't uh, continue trying, you'll never get anywhere. But we, we've, uh, we've gotten some of the things that we wanted done done. And it must feel great to be an employer. Yes. Being it, able to help families. It does. Uh, it's not an easy task. It's not an easy thing to be an employer. Um, with the good come the bad. But you, over, you try to overlook that and try to um, make things better as best you can. Um, you also become a family to your employees um, because, after all, you listen to all their problems and they have families and they have children and you try to help as much as you can when you can. Sometimes you can't help and that's, that's hard. Um, recently we had a waitstaff member of ours that passed away who was with us for 30 years. She died a few months after her 60th birthday. She was with us for 30 years. She was like, she was like a aunt to me. Sorry about that. And uh, that hit us all very hard. Um, she left behind two daughters and her husband and a grandson. And, um, you know, it, it, not a day goes by where we don't laugh at the stuff that we used to talk about and the funny things that her name was Kuka that, that she used to say and, and, and do and, you know, and all our customers miss her dearly. So we have that, that aspect of our business. I know, what I like about going into your place is you could see all the people from the community eating at your place. Absolutely. And what is it they like most? Is it the roast beef? Is it the Sunday breakfast? What, what is it? Breakfast is our biggest spot. It's uh, definitely our biggest spot. Nighttime, late night, our cheese and gravy fries or our buffalo wings, uh, you know, our home fries, our coffee is fantastic. Um, you know, we're always trying to make new things, try new recipes. Right now we just started some new things, and, and I rolled them out the other day. And... Uh, so that's that's part of the business too, right? Oh, you changing always, the menu. You always. have to. And now, right how, now. Do you, how do you deal with a, a, a change in in a chef? I mean, because everybody notices when a chef changes. Absolutely, uh, th- that's a that's a big problem. But today, recipes like we had in the old school days are kind of gone. It's not the same as it was where uh, we were making uh, stuffed cabbage. I almost don't see stuffed cabbage anywhere anymore. It's one of those lost things, and. Um, I talk about it with my peers, and we're like, yeah, well, that's gone. It doesn't sell like it used to. Or, and if you have, you've had a recipe like that for many years, and now you've changed it even a tad bit, you hear the complaints right away. Wow. It's, it's a very, it's a that's very delicate, delicate balance to be able to make something the way the guy did it the day before because everybody's different. If I make my soup or if my chef makes it, it's completely different. Wow. Even if we follow the recipe, which there really isn't a recipe. But it's still different. It's a pinch of this and a pinch of that. All our pinches are different. <laughs> you know, it's like our, just like our fingerprints are all different. Yeah. So are our pinches of food. Wow. Yeah. That's fascinating. And the food, um, 
my wife sometimes will go to a restaurant and she'll say, oh, the eggs here are delicious. Can I ask you a question? Do eggs, are eggs different or depending on where they come from or are all eggs the same? Eggs are all the same. They That's come, what I thought. 99.9% .9 of all our diner eggs come from the same place. Uh -huh. um, what I think people, people eat with their eyes. Uh -huh. And if they see eggs over and they're done a little bit too much or eggs over medium, they're not done enough. And they're not, they don't have that brown skin on them. Or if poached eggs aren't medium or soft, a customer takes that and says, what the hell, you ruined my eggs. <laughs> so breakfast and food, the way it's, it shows is very important. And it could ruin a person's day or it could make it better. And, and, we're, and what's the secret of French toast? French toast has to be dipped. The bread has to be a little drier. Do you uh, toast the bread at all, or no, you don't toast no, it? No, no, we grill it. You we grill we, we dip it, and we grill it. Okay. Yeah, and it's got to be a little thicker. I use a thick white bread, so uh -huh. also a Texas bread. We have that, too. Anything else you want to talk about, Frank? Um, you know, Frank, thank you for having me You're a part welcome. of this. Um, You're very welcome. You know, it, it's it's a pleasure to uh, to be on this show to talk about Bridgeport. I know that I love Bridgeport. I know you love Bridgeport more. I do love Bridgeport. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that love this city and will do anything to keep it great. And uh, hopefully with all these things happening downtown, we'll only go far ahead. We'll go further. It was great sharing some water with you. Yes, nice absolutely. talking to you. Next time it'll be a beer or something, okay? Definitely, definitely. All right. Or my moonshine. Or your moonshine. That's great. <laughs> oh, you have a liquor license, right? I, ha I have a wine and beer license at the diner. Um, the moonshine is not a license, it's just but a hobby. But can you make drinks now and, and, and sell drinks? I can sell drinks? bottled wine, I can sell bottled beer. Okay. Yeah, uh, in order to sell mixed drinks, you have to have that All type right, of license. But you, you're good for bottling, for yeah. beer. Yeah. So if somebody wants a glass of wine, you can sell that. Yeah, so the bo I have little, uh, what are they, uh, beer for bottles. I, and sometimes my good customers that come, I just give them away. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> big deal. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Nick, and as always, good talking to you. Thank you, Frank, you too. All right. Good talking to you. Thank you for joining Bridgeport Stories.